Hello, hello, and welcome to another update video about ADA. I think like in the good old times, it's worth to do another ADA video today um, due to the price action today. Um, some of the more loyal viewers uh, who've been with us in 2021, early 2022, you know, um, remember that we used to cover ADA twice a day, sometimes even three times. Those were the humble beginnings. Um, but that was in the bull market, yeah, 2021. Um, so it feels a little bit like that. Okay, it's, it's far from that, of course. It's far from that. But yeah, maybe um, because it's Friday, let's do another update for ADA. Also, because a lot of you asked me for another update, you would like to know what is the micro count here, here in this, basically in this C wave to the upside. Well, see, the structure isn't very clear, but I can, um, I'll do my best to give you um, a proposed structure for this, um, yeah, for this move to the upside, basically. The um, idea is obviously that this is a C wave to the upside as discussed in the previous video. The idea would be that we are in some kind of a diagonal pattern, okay? Um, so the, the idea would be that this is either um, a one, two, three, four, five pattern in a C wave, which would be an ending diagonal that completes a wave four and from there can move to new bear market lows. It's just a scenario to be cautious about, okay? Um, that means we cannot we cannot rule out that we will get another bear market low. However, at the moment, um, it's impossible to say if we will or not because it's either that C wave, which would be, let's say, the bearish scenario, but it's short-term still bullish, or it's the leading diagonal scenario in which this is a wave one, a wave two, three, four, five of a larger wave one, then we come down, pull back in a wave two. Or you might call that again an A, B, doesn't matter. And then a C wave up or a third wave up. That That's, you know, that's all stuff for the future. We have to take it level by level with ADA because the latest bear market structure that formed sort of in, you know, in May, June, July, it's, it's an absolute um, horrible mess. That doesn't mean it's bearish, but it just means it leaves a lot of room for interpretation for different scenarios that's the problem however at the moment and that's always the positive um thing here yeah, we have a positive situation here if it makes it easier for analysis if the bullish and the bearish scenario are mirror counts what does that mean it means as i just explained to you in both scenarios we're watching for a diagonal pattern so we can just follow it and only after this fifth wave we need to um, consider or we need to think about, okay, what, what's next, okay? Um, of course, you know, it can always break down earlier, but that's the whole reason for tracking these, you know, the, the main reason for that, um, or to track that is, um, not the main reason to track that, that's the main reason why we have support areas on the chart, because the support areas tell us when the wave count has to change. So if they break, you know, something different is going on, but for now, you know, nothing changes, nothing had to change, no support broke, no invalidation. So the idea is um, because we're dealing with a diagonal pattern that the wave one was an A, B, C structure in which the B wave was a triangle. That is valid. B waves can be triangles. We had a wave two, which is a corrective pattern anyway. Then here the wave three, and I explained that in the previous video, the view is that the A wave formed, then another B wave triangle, and now the C wave. And now then we would get a wave four and five. The question is, is the C wave already over? Well, technically it's possible. Again, you can see how relevant the 1.618 extension level was. I presented that level to you as one of the targets for the third wave. But um, even though that is absolutely sufficient for a third wave in a diagonal, it's actually a pretty good level, the 1.618. You see that here today, uh, I go to the one hour chart, the market perfectly reacted to it yeah perfectly absolutely perfectly um but if we look at the subdivisions we have here an a wave we have a b wave triangle and a c wave to the upside now if we have this you know th this c wave to the upside um then we can use the subdivisions and the the you know the internal structure to determine targets for the c wave so there are, again there are different ways of calculating targets but it's often that the C wave reaches the 100% extension level of the wave A, 
And that's at 61.5 cents that hasn't been reached yet. However, we've reached an ideal target for the third wave. So I'm very open to the idea that maybe a top could be in now, but we need evidence for that. So that is now where we're going to take a look at the microstructure. Also in the previous video, I gave you a micro support level against which we could still focus on higher. These micro support levels, however, always have to be adjusted with a price. So I will do that now. And this is also at the same time, before we now do a deep dive into the microstructure, these, these uh, support levels in here, 46 cents it is now, this is an important level that needs to hold to maintain upside momentum. A break below 46 cents will indicate that the wave C of 3 topped and that wave 4 has begun. So now let's take a look at the microstructure. So... As explained to you before, there is a potential um, to call this here an Elliott wave triangle. Yeah, we can we can count this move here as a triangle. This move that occurred end of um, yeah end of November. So we call that a wave four. No, sorry, a wave B. Um, wave four is technically possible as well, but um, it makes sense as a wave B. As I, but I explained that in the last in the last video. Then we have here our Elliott wave triangle. Now let's get a, a detailed wave count again because this now determines where we start counting really, right? So this could be an A wave. This could be a B wave. This could be the C wave. This could be the D wave and the E wave. But this is where now micro counting gets difficult. So this could absolutely be a B wave. Yeah? And then I've got a one, two setup here, which is pretty clear. And we can then follow the pathway to the upside. The problem is I can also, that's absolutely valid, extend the triangle out to here. Yeah. Easy. You can easily do that. It, it doesn't really make a difference. It's just that it will be diffic more difficult um, to count the microstructure here really if I haven't got that very clear one two setup in the beginning. Does it matter in the short term? Not really. Not really. Um, because essentially all I need to do, I need to try to determine and identify five waves here. And the problem is this crazy extension higher here. This seems really, really long. So it's a bit tricky really to, to determine, um, to determine a five wave structure here with this messy structure, but we'll give our best. So I think, you know, my view is that this here would be a one. So it looks like a leading diagonal in wave one of C. Then we have a wave two pullback. Then obviously we need to determine, okay, where could that third wave be? Um, this would be probably a three. This would be probably a four. And then with a very long extended fifth wave. That's the best I can do right now with this um, structure here. So let's make that uh, yellow as well. Or did we, no, white, it's fine. So five waves up in wave C, but, so first of all, we've got enough waves in place, but then now let's do a deep dive here into the microstructure of wave five, because this also needs to be basically a five wave move, right? So here we've got a pretty clear one, two, um, or actually, it's probably down there. So it's a pretty extended one. One, two, then this might be another one, two, three, four, five, in three, four, five. So again, micro counting, extremely fragile. Many analysts don't do it. I probably shouldn't do it here, but it just gives you an orientation where we are. I think one more high still seems reasonable. Okay, still seems likely, um, especially as long as we are holding the 50% FIP level, which I gave you in the beginning at 46 cents. But to be honest, I can even give you a support level, but that's really absolute micro support for this year. I will not put that onto the chart, but it tells you basically when um, this move up is likely over this last bit. And that would basically, because the fifth wave, mean that probably wave C has topped. We can do that by taking the length just of that third wave and it should hold 49.8 cents so 49.8 cents is really micro support okay that means this wave four could go down to that level 
as long as that level is holding, I would be prefer here one more high into the yellow um, target zone between 61.5 and 74.5 cents. Hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea and orientation of the or about the microstructure. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Also make sure that you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. You can find the links for those channels in the description. Um, thanks a lot. Bye-bye.